In this week's Cardiology Countdown, we'll talk about sleep and lifestyle at work, uh, and also two interesting studies in using BNP in STEMI and in outpatients. So to begin with, there are a pair of studies in JAMA this week that look at lifestyle of, of us working at the hospital. Um, it compared for the residents um, a strategy of having a protected sleep time uh, where between midnight and 5 a.m. Uh, they had to sign out their beepers and looked at um, how they were responsive and using a sleep scale and responsiveness, not that surprisingly, um, the residents were more alert on uh, morning rounds. But they also looked in a separate study for the attendings and compared two and four week rotations and found no difference in terms of outcomes of people coming back to the hospital during the subsequent 30 days if you had done a two week versus four week rotation. Uh, but interestingly, um, the burnout rate seemed to be lower in uh, attendings who followed a two-week schedule to accomplish their total six weeks of, of clinical time, um, and uh, as opposed to a longer block. The one downside of this was that team cohesion uh, and teaching seemed to be scored a little bit lower for the two-week attending rotations. Next up is the study of BNP in ST elevation MI, not to predict uh, clinical outcomes, uh, but to look at um, renal nephropathy developing after contrast. So this was a study from the Horizons AMI study, just about 1,000 patients, where BNP had about a 30% uh, higher risk, if elevated, of developing contrast-induced nephropathy as compared with patients with lower BNP values. And so this is uh, another reason to be on alert for patients with a high BNP in ST elevation MI. And our number one pick this week is a novel study from the Dallas Heart um, study that looked at outpatients without known LV dysfunction or um, significant uh, renal disease where they did screening MRIs uh, and also measured uh, troponin and BNP. Very interestingly, uh, looking for LVH, they found that um, unsuspectedly in about 9% of patients. And even more intriguingly, elevated BNP and elevated troponins were each found in about a quarter of the patients. And when they focused in on the LVH patients, they found that the combination of either an elevated troponin or BNP um, with the LVH predicted about a fourfold higher risk of developing heart failure over the coming years. And so they note that this uh, use of BNP or troponin in patients with LVH seems to pick out a very malignant form of LVH that might uh, warrant uh, more aggressive attention, certainly, and treatment. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.